Happy Valentine's! Today we're capturing the elegance of those eternity roses that last for a year. Inspired by the gorgeous Venus and Flora box arrangements with these eternity rose cake pops, we'll be making these realistic roses start to finish as well as the DIY packaging and custom stickers as an enchanting Valentine's Day treat idea for your small business or a thoughtful gift. And guys, your sweet support is always appreciated so I wanted to give my love and gratitude with this Valentine's Day giveaway for your chance to win this super cute Venus and Flora gift set featuring a mini heart rose box and a box of bonbons. These eternity roses can last more than a year if kept safely on display and add beauty to any space that you want to decorate. To enter you need to be subscribed to my channel here here on YouTube. Then in the comment section down below, comment your Instagram username with a rose emoji and also be following me on my Instagram. I'll be announcing the winner on my Instagram story Friday, February 2nd. Thank you so much again to all my subscribers for motivating me to create more content. The key to rolling the prettiest cake pop shapes like our lovely rose is a super smooth dough recipe that rolls like a dream. All you're going to need are one box of Pillsbury cake mix in the flavor of your choice, as well as half a cup of milk, three quarters a cup of water, four tablespoons of melted butter, and two eggs. If you haven't seen the full tutorial on my channel before, all the secret methods can be found there. It's almost like a free class with more detailed information and all the basic do's and don'ts to prevent common cake pop mistakes. Be sure to give the batter a mix 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 until combined and pour it into an 8x12 inch pan that has been greased and lined with parchment paper. It's important not to overbake the cake to prevent a dry cracky dough. So I suggest baking for 20 to 25 minutes at 325 degrees or until a toothpick comes out clean. The next step is a game changer for locking in all the moisture. Immediately straight out of the oven, you'll want to start sweating your cake with aluminum foil for 30 minutes. See the condensation on the foil there. Then after the cake has cooled down, continue by wrapping with a layer of saran wrap and seal it up inside of large Ziploc bags overnight. This two-step sweating process is something to never skip. If you need more help with how to do it, feel free to refer to my cake pop tutorial for the full demonstration. Now it's the next day and we're ready to make this dough. Let's unwrap it and slice up the cake into cubes. And actually, a common question that I often receive from you guys in the comments, can a hand mixer be used to form the dough instead of a stand mixer if you don't have one? Yes, the hand mixer will do the trick. However, it just requires more muscle and some patience to come together. The paddle attachment needs the dough and does all the work for you, so I've always done it this way. Whichever mixer you choose, it's important to ensure the dough is firm and doesn't have that crumbly texture. I gradually increase the speed until all the crumbs are gone. Signs you know it's done is when the firm pieces of dough pull away from the side of the bowl and when formed into a disc, it will be nice and smooth for easy crack free shaping. To create the base of the rose, my go-to essentials are a meatball scoop and an oval shaped mold such as this egg mold from My Little Cake Pop. I will link all the supplies I use in the description box down below. First scoop out a portion of dough and remove all the excess scraps. Then start squeezing and flattening into a compact patty shape with lots of pressure to eliminate cracks. 
Once you have your Krabby Patty, ease up on the pressure as you cup in your hands to create a smooth round ball. It doesn't need to be perfectly round. Before placing in the mold, I slightly elongate and taper the middle area to make the shape as close to an oval as possible. That way the dough fills up all the empty areas of the mold when firmly pressed shut. After giving it a good squeeze, open the mold and carefully remove by peeling it out. Then clean up the seam around the edge with a lollipop stick or toothpick. The final touch is to cut off about a quarter from the end and pinch around to remold and tweak the shape after cutting. An oval achieves a more realistic rosebud shape for the base rather than a classic round cake pop wood. Right before we get dipping, the fun part is molding the beautiful 3D flowers to go on top. Being that the three dimensional mold is deeper, it helps to pour with a silicone pouring cup such as my OXO cup and shake as you fill to get in all the nooks and crannies. Also having the chocolate melt at a smooth pourable consistency. For all the roses today, I'm using Merkins brand. There may be some air bubbles on the surface from all the shaking. All you need to do is pop the bubbles with a toothpick or cookie scribe. Tap, tap, tap to settle out the chocolate and pop these in the fridge for about 20 minutes or until completely set. I really like how beginner friendly and stretchy this rose mold is compared to others. First I begin around the edges and gradually stretch to ease it out. As you may know, usually this is not a fun task, especially with delicate designs like the skull hands or thin princess frames that easily snap. With this mold, you won't experience any difficulties like that. As for the stunning gold roses, keep in mind the color is a deeper gold. If you're going for the signature Venus et Fleur inspired look, I recommend molding the flowers with Merkin's milk chocolate instead of yellow or white melts, which appear as a lighter gold when the luster dust is applied over it. Our friends Coco and Berry are going to help us add some sparkle. My tips and tricks for providing the most coverage is to apply the gold luster dust with a three-step technique. First part is to dry brush the rose from top to bottom and everywhere in between the petals and crevices with a large fluffy brush. Then step two is to paint over the first layer with gold edible paint by mixing small amounts of clear vodka into the luster dust until it's a paint consistency. A good quality, high proof alcohol like Everclear will allow the intensity of the pigments to pop even more. Last but not least, step three after the paint has dried is buffing over the paint with dry luster dust again Think of this full coverage technique as similar to doing special makeup before a photo shoot. It's also set to last longer too, so not only does the gold look amazing, but is less likely to rub off of the chocolate as well. To bring the red and pink roses to life, there's no need to do the three-step procedure. Simply brush on your favorite luster dust. The red was from my local cake supply store and has some gold undertones to it. The pink was the Royal Chem brand in the shade Blush Pastel Pink found on itwasallawadreamshop.com. It's almost time to start dipping and our friend Teddy prefers wooden skewers for a clean look on any bouquet. Keep in mind that the standard cake pop stands I would usually use like the tiered one from Amazon on the left or Hobby Lobby on the right are designed for lollipop sticks. The skewers move around and aren't stable to stay in place so for this project a block of floral foam will keep the skewers secure. The skewers are inserted the same way as lollipop sticks. Grab a skewer and dip the pointy end into a small amount of chocolate, shaking off any excess, and stick directly into the center. Then allow them to set for at least 10 minutes on the counter to fully anchor the base to the stick. While waiting during those 10 minutes, heat your chocolate to dipping temperature, flip the roses over, and dip until completely covered tapping off the excess while still upside down. 
My tips are to work quickly to ensure the chocolate is still wet and have the roses all ready to go to attach onto the base before the chocolate sets, holding for about 15 seconds before placing upright in the floral foam to dry. And guys, if you're enjoying so far, thank you for stopping by my channel. Be sure to join the party and subscribe for more fun treat tutorials and hit that bell to receive all notifications. Another tip is to lower the dipping temperature slightly less than normal. If the chocolate is too runny, you risk the rose slipping off. Usually for Merkins, I dip between 86 to 90, but I lower it to 84 degrees instead. Depending on the brand, temperature guidelines vary, which I outline in my ebook on my Etsy shop or in the video links on the top right of the screen. Plug in the brand of your choice and adjust one or two degrees lower. All that's missing is to dust the bottom base with the matching luster dust to complete the Eternity Rose. Remember the base of the gold is achieved with a 3 step technique for best results. Capture the elegance of the Venus at Fleur presentation by packaging with a marble hat box, 2 blocks of floral foam and black craft paint. These boxes were a nice sturdy quality for packaging and were available in black and white marble. All I'm doing is working with the thicker sides of the floral foam and pressing the bricks together to fit the box over the top. Tracing around the rim of the box with a pencil for the perfect custom fit. Cut around the circle with a non serrated knife and paint the floral foam with black craft paint and a sponge brush. The best time to paint is after the foam is inside the box. All it takes are a few coats of paint until completely opaque. Once the paint is dry, it's completely optional to add DIY foil stickers for a customized touch. At the end of the video, I show you how to make your own on the Cricut. To give you an idea, this is the smallest size box in the set, able to fit approximately 13 to 14 roses. I trim the skewers a bit with a clipper before arranging each rose in the box. And we have the most memorable and gorgeous Valentine's gift or custom small business item. Integrating Cricut customization as an add-on makes it even more unique. Give these foil stickers a try if you like Cricut DIYs. The list of 5 items for this project are 1. A blue light grip mat 2. This black sticker paper or substitute with a medium weight black cardstock 3. This foil transfer kit that includes gold foil sheets and a 3-in-1 foil tip It can be found in the Cricut Joy section at Michael's Craft Store 4. Is masking tape and last a fine point blade as far as the custom SVG, I contacted this graphic designer shop on Etsy, HMC Design Firm. The service and products are amazing. Send the owner a message with a picture of the logo you're interested in with a description and they will let you know the package to select at checkout. The shop is always very professional and super fast. Go ahead and upload the SVG file to your canvas on Design Space. An example of how it will look as a sticker is to select the oval shape in the Shapes tab and put it behind the logo layer. Looks great except when the foil function is added, you'll notice that it doesn't fill in the design completely, only an outline of it. Take a peek right here. So a quick fix for that is to insert a rectangle with multiple lines all through it to fill inside the outline with pen-like strokes similar to a tattoo. To achieve that, I'm deleting the oval and the exact rectangle needed can be downloaded for free from Jennifer Maker. Love her channel, I will link two tutorials down below. Once the rectangle and logo are both on the canvas, start by putting the weld function onto each layer. I do this first so I don't forget because the function automatically won't work if there's more than two layers. Now both the logo and rectangle are welded. Resize the rectangular layer so the logo fits completely inside without adjusting the angle of the rectangle. Keep that the same. I have the logo size to fit my box. 
so I'm keeping it the way it is. For reference, the dimensions are 2.78 by 2.13 inches for the logo, and the rectangle is 5.14 by 4.2 after sizing. Next, select both layers and move over to the size window. Multiply the current numbers by 10 and click enter. It'll be super up close. Feel free to zoom out and press the slice button. It may take some time to process like slicing into a pizza pie. Then finish by deleting the rectangle layer and remaining copies. I usually keep the second one from the top and your foil design is all filled in. Just adjust the size back to the original by dividing by 10. Don't forget to add the oval shape for the sticker behind the logo. I played around with these dimensions to fit the box. My oval came out to 3.25 by 2.3 inches, just enough to enclose the logo. Next, we're all set to print. Here, I duplicated the design to print two stickers in the same cut. Although the sheet of cardstock can fit a lot more, the foil doesn't have as much room. Prepare the blue map by lining up the cardstock corner to corner and select 12 by 12 for material or smaller if your machine is a Cricut Joy. Then for type, select medium cardstock and it will show the on-screen instructions. The foil needs to be taped down with the masking tape, which is another consideration for why there's less cutting space. As a warning, never cling the foil onto the sticky part of the mat. Now it's time to load the foil transfer tool into clamp B. The kit includes fine, medium, and bold. Since I chose bold for my foil setting, I match it accordingly. Feel free to spend time doing another activity. The foil transfer takes a while to complete with all the pen-like tattoo strokes. I wish you were as fast as this looks. Just set it and forget it until the job is done. After the foil transfer part is complete, carefully peel off the masking tape without unloading the mat and switch out the foil tool for the fine point blade. This part is easy peasy and our fabulous DIY foil stickers are complete and ready to take any creation to the next level. No worries if you don't have the sticker paper available, simply substitute with plain medium weight cardstock and adhere with glue dots or adhesive of your choice. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it gave you some Valentine's inspiration. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and don't forget to enter the giveaway. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.